This is so good. It's even specifying the types over here. It actually did the job. Unless you've been living under a rock, this thing has been popping up everywhere and for a good reason. So me having a background in artificial intelligence, I'm of course naturally interested in new developments like this. And I've been putting it to the test, but mainly just to play around with it, see its capabilities. But this day I was recording a new video for my YouTube series where we cover a complete machine learning project from start to finish using Python. And I came up with the idea to put ChatGPT to the test with an actual data science problem. So the series that I was recording today was all about outlier detection, how to detect outliers in sensor data. And the results that I got were so good that I was like, okay, I have to stop what I'm doing right now. I have to make a video about this because you guys have to see this before ChatGPT turns into a paid model or something like that. So now it's a free, as you can see right here, it's a free research preview and this is free for everyone. So let me show you what I did this morning and let's see how awesome this is. So in the YouTube series that I'm working on, we're working with sensor data that is measuring accelerometer and gyroscope data. Not really important for this video right now, but we wanna create an outlier detection algorithm that can go over the first six columns. So the ones that you are seeing right here and loop over all these numerical values and identify whether there are any outliers and then mark them as either true or false. This is basically the re request that I put or, or gave to GPT-3. So let's see how it works. So here we go. Create a Python function that can mark columns from a pandas data frame as outliers using the IQR method. Let's see what we get. Okay, so it's thinking. Okay, here it's starting. Okay, so to mark columns as outliers using the IQR method. Okay, now it's actually creating code for us. So a function mark outliers IQR, really good name. So we have a pandas data frame and we have a column. And then, okay, what does it do? Q1, Q3, looking good. IQR, yeah. Okay, what else we got? Oh, we got, we even get an example. Wow. Okay, so let's check this out. So without changing anything, we copy the code and we come back over here. Let me clear this up. And now this function takes as input data frame. So that is our DF. And let's say we want to take the first column in our data frame. So let's run this. Wow. Okay, so we're getting an outlier column. So it's all NANs, is, is that correct? There are actually true values in here. So it actually did the job. So we have a function that can take a data frame as an input and a column and then outputs that same data frame with a new column called outlier. And we can even make this even better to say, okay, we don't call this outlier, but we say call and then plus and we do an underscore. Let me check. So now, we should have, yes, so we know which column it is. Okay, this is really awesome. And so now what if we say for call in outlier columns, we do this and then we change it to that. Let's start with a fresh data frame again. Check the result. For all of the six numerical columns within our data frame, we now have a series indicating with either true or an N whether the value is an outlier or not. So wow. That is actually amazing, right? This is so cool. Let's, let's do one more test. So now create the same function, but with the local outlier factor or love method. So, so let's see if this, if this actually works. Okay, here it goes. Yes, it's using the scikit-learn local outlier factor. This is so good. It's even specifying the types over here. So data frame is supposed to be a pandas data frame and the column is supposed to be a string and the output is a pandas data frame. This is such a proper way of writing a Python function. And I typically never do that because I'm too lazy to write it out. So also like the name of this function. So first mark outliers IQR and then LOF, so it's using the abbreviation of local outlier factor. It's just like, how can it make sense of all of that? I find it so interesting. This is legit a better function than I would be able to come up with on my own. Also like all the, it's properly commented. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> wow. All I can say is that I am impressed. Like for real, like artificial intelligence is here. Like it's here in front of us. We can use it and it's free for everyone. Just go to chat.openai.com and, and play around 
with this. I will definitely be putting this more to the test also for my, my data science project. But just from looking at this test alone, it's there are so many possibilities with this. And of course, you still need your expert judgment and experience as a data scientist to determine whether this code is actually useful and can be applied to the problem at hand. But this can save you so much time looking up certain syntax and writing out the specific structure of Python functions and commenting everything. Like this is just, it's beautiful. <laughs> it saves so much time. And I think this can really help people that are new to data science as well. Like by just, just showing, ex by looking at examples of, okay, how do I do this? How do I structure a function? How do I comment code? You basically have a mentor that you can look up to and then look, okay, how is my mentor, in, the, in this case, the AI, writing this code? And then you can learn from it and apply it uh, to your own problems. It, it is really fascinating. And this is, this is going to change data science as we know it. And not just data science, coding and I would even go as far as saying like the world in general. This is such a huge leap in like technology, technological improvement, I would say. It's just, I'm really impressed, man. So go ahead and, and try it out, play around with it. It's actually really fun. Now that's what I wanted to show you in today's quick video. And I should probably get back to recording the video that I was supposed to be recording today. Now, if you find this video helpful, then please consider subscribing to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Dave. I work as a freelance data scientist. I'm also the founder of Data Lumina, which is a coaching business for data professionals that want to learn how to start a business. And on this YouTube channel, we make videos about machine learning, Python, data science, and also freelancing. So if that's your thing, consider subscribing. Please like the video, and then I'll see you in the next one. Wow, what the actual fuck?